Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the NHL slate for this evening. Um, and this is probably going to be the format uh, going forward. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the live streams for the hockey, just because, especially once the NBA gets started, probably going to have to focus a little more on that. But maybe if I really get into it, I'll have Bobby deal with the NBA and I'll just focus on hockey, which will keep my blood pressure low, that's for sure. Um, but at the very least, we're going to do a recording where I go over the slate, even though it's a little bit early, and go through the process of how I build my lineups with the, you know, the caution that, you know, projections can change and guys can be out and things like that. But this is the way I would do it if even if the slate were locking in 20 minutes. With the exception of the overall view, which I'm going to get to first. So again, this is going to be the similar to the way I did the golf earlier. If you guys watch that. First, I'm just going to look at the totals and see what teams I would imagine are going to look good. Then I'm going to go to my sheets and see what, according to my sheets, do look good. And then we're going to put Saberson to work and have it build lineups specifically uh, tailored towards the contest that we're going to play. So what you're looking at here is the Saberson, uh, the Saberson facing the site. Uh, if you have a true DFS subscription that allows you to get Saberson, it will look a little different. But the reason I put it up here is just to just to take a quick look at the team totals. So you know, Toronto with a 4.2, they rate to be the highest scoring team on the slate. Um, and then you have Boston and Edmonton are pretty clear second. And Carolina. So um, not not that it always works out this way, but normally, you know, goals correlate with fantasy points. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that fantasy points correlate with good fantasy plays because, again, you have to be able to fit your salary together and all that stuff. But it's good to at least think about what could happen. So I would imagine that guys from Toronto, Carolina, Boston and Edmonton will look good. So the next thing I want to do is I want to pull up my sheets and show you how I deal with this again. And again, for those of you who are watching this for the first time, I, you know, uh, this is going to be new for those of you that are not watching for the first time. I I'm, I'm going to just do this every time, by the way. So this is the sheet that is available for some subs premium subscribers on true DFS. And just to remind ourselves what we're looking at here, name, team, position, salary, projected fantasy points. And that's kind of a combination of everybody's projections from the industry, tweaked, massaged, scrubbed, you know, uh, a little TLC, you know, a little um, back tested some of them for, for accuracy, uh, et cetera. Then point per dollar, which is basically salary into fantasy points. And Sheets Value Score, which is my own kind of uh, take on how, how important it is to have raw points versus how important it is to be good value. And this is the way I rank my players. And then projected ownership, your opponent, and here are the EV line, your projected even strength line, and projected power play line. Now, again, these things change. Um, and they change throughout the course. Well, not throughout the course of the day, but when you get to the actual – game time they, they will let you know who's on what line pretty much nonetheless what i like to do again is you take a fifty thousand foot view and, and you first you just step back and you take a look at this and you see if you can find players from the same team that look really good okay and that's you know, the 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 primitive way of saying that we need to find correlation among our stack mates right because that's what hockey is. It's trying to find people going to be on the ice at the same time. One will pass to the other, the other one scores. And that's the way you get points. So let's first try to find guys that rate in the top 20, I suppose, um, that are on the same team. And then we can get greedy and see if they're going to be on the same line. So again, the first thing I just notice is that although Pasternak is the number one guy, there's no other Bostons even – near the near him on the list as far as values go so and also considering that um it's usually not the greatest idea to one-off the expensive guys like that 
he might, even though he ranks to be the top play, might end up being somebody I think. Uh, the, the other thing I'll note is that you got two Edmonton guys in the top five or top six. Hyman and McDavid, they're both on the same power play line. And then you can get down to Nugent Hopkins here and Drysidel. So you have four, and there's Kane. So there's five guys from Edmonton all in the top 25 or so. And there's not perfect correlation because Kane's in the first line, but second power play. Drysidel's second line, first power play. Hopkins, second line, first power play, which is sort of good, you know? So you could basically put all these guys together. And listen, if you can afford it. The other thing I'll notice is that you have a really two really cheap, actually a few really cheap high sheets value score plays, and you don't get them that often. So you, it's it's good to make a note of this. So Cole Caulfield, very very strong value. Alexia Falo from Winnipeg, very strong value. And then you'll have um, Pierre Luc Dubois at thirty five hundred, really really good value. So. These guys will show up, you know, these guys are very useful one-offs in your four threes. And also they're useful if you compare them with something else. So like, for example, you see Dubois at 3,500, you see Fiala at 6K who shows up in the, you know, shows up as a good play. Uh, the problem is they're not on the same line. Actually, that's not, uh, they're not on the same line. Dubois third line, second power play line. Well, Fiala's actually on the third line, so that's not bad. Um, let's see if you follow. We can find some pairing for him. Yeah, so Kyle Connor is on the power play line. He looks good. Uh, yeah, so th those that's what I notice, at least when I'm just staring at the sheets here. Okay. Um, the other thing is that Toronto, you have Nylander, and Marner, two of the top guys. And then you have Klingberg. Oh, he's on Toronto now? Maybe he always was. And then I presume that all three of these are on the same power play lines. Yes. So Nylander, Tavares, um, Klingberg are all on the same power play line. So that's a good stack. So from a hand building perspective, what I'm imagining that we should probably try to do is either, well, you would take an Edmonton stack with those cheap one-offs or maybe the, the Toronto stack. That would be kind of the idea. The other thing you want to look at are the goalies because what you'd like to do is try to find the cheapest goalie that rates well. And it turns out both these goalies, the top-rated goalies, are pretty cheap. So Hellebuck and Georgiev, 75, 7,800. I'll probably want to use one of them. Now, the good news is that Hall and Booth, he uh, correlates with the Winnipeg guys a little bit. So if I did play those that Winnipeg uh, thing, like O'Connor and uh, and Iafalo, you get a little bit of correlation from him. So as a matter of fact, let's uh, let's do it. Let's build the line up here. Um, NHL. Build the lineup. Let's check something really quick. Let's see what we can build. So we're going to start with that goalie so we don't forget about it. We'll start with Hello Book. Okay, boom. I put it right in. Now, let's just see if we can get greedy and play all those Edmonton guys that we mentioned. But we got to start. I think we're going to have to start with that cheapo. So we're going to start with that um, the Afalo. I think it's going to be pretty important to play him. Uh, we might even want to put Cole Caulfield in too, but let, let, let's let let's start with these guys. And let's put in the Edmonton guys, just kind of like we'll right down the list. So we're going to go with Hyman, McDavid. Uh, it was Nugent Hopkins too, right? Eugen Hopkins and then Drysidel. Who's the clip? Who's the deep? Was the defenseman? Wait, it was Hyman, McDavid, Nugent Hopkins, Drysidel, and Evander Kane, actually. 
So, I mean, you actually can almost do this without even making any concessions. I mean, you can't quite do it because you really don't want to double punt at defense like that. But you can almost do it. So what I see is this Klingberg for Toronto, who we mentioned before, at 3,200. So if we put that in, Toronto, putting Klingberg there. And then we can replace one of these Edmontons with one of those Toronto guys. We, we might have a shot. So we played Klingberg, and who are the other Torontos? Nylander 5,900, Tavares 6,400, Marner 6,400. Who's the cheapest of them? Well, first of all, let's get a little correlation. So he's 2 1. Are any of these other guys 2 1? Tavares is 2 1. So we could put him in. Um, so if you put Tavares in instead of, say, Drysidle, then you can make this work. So now you can play a four man Edmonton with a two man Toronto and leave yourself with, you know, with a one off for defenseman. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, and just for funsies, see if we can't find a defenseman that fits. Klingberg, we already got. Um, most of these guys are expensive. To play Shatternick, 2,800, do that. So the point is there are guys you could play. So I, I think that's what I would probably try to do is some combination of Edmonton with Toronto. Um, from a hand-building perspective, you could certainly get, get away with that pretty easily, actually. Um, just for fun, we'll put some. Is McCabe, he's, does he actually play on Toronto? I mean, is, he, is he decent? Yeah, so we could, we could put him in as well. Double, double defense for Toronto. 4-3 with the one there. We're going to change this too, but I just, I just want to do this right. That's football. Good job, Eric. Um, let's just pull up defensemen and see who like good guys are at 4,200. Play this guy, Tony D'Angelo. You know, he probably the highest projected, right? Yeah, so we can play Tony D'Angelo as a one off as defenseman. Or we could be really, you know, now we have two one-offs though. So maybe we play the Toronto guy. Two Torontos, maybe an Edmonton defenseman. Can we afford that? Who's an Edmonton defenseman? Bouchard. Remember Bouchard was so, used to be so cheap? Play Darnell Nurse. Let's see, who else is good at defenseman? This is what I would do, by the way. Darnell Nurse, 4,600. That's not bad. Josh Morrissey, Tony D'Angelo again. Bouchard. So when you put Darnell Nurse in, then you can, then you can again, you can almost do it. And this by 300. Anyway, you can you can you can you can make this happen. So now let's go to uh, Saberson and let's see what Saberson will come up with. Now the first thing that I did was I put the uh, the contest sim settings in already. So we're playing two contests: the puck drop, which is the MME thing, and the top shelf is the three thirty three. And um, we put in the settings where it's contest size, percent to first. Again, an attempt to get the uh the contest simulator to tailor the lineups specifically to the contest we're playing so first thing we're going to do is we're going to upload the the numbers 
and we're going to run what 40 something like that we'll run 40 lineups we'll build 5,000 but we'll run 40 see what it looks like I'm curious what, uh, what what we'll get here. Now, this first set that we're going to see are is just the regular, you know, rated by Saber score type uh, lineups, and we'll see what those look like. Those look like a good amount of Edmonton and Winnipeg, just like I thought. Okay, interesting. But now we're going to run the contest sims, which takes into account the specific contest size and things like that and also runs it against, you know, the Sabre Sim ownership projections. And then we'll see what kind of differences we get. Okay, so we're gonna, it, that was really quick. So we're gonna sort this by puck drop risk-adjusted ROI, and still a good amount of Edmonton, but then more Vancouver, uh, Montreal, Colorado, Toronto. And then when you look at the stack exposure, I do like that it's really, it's really stacking it up, which is a big improvement over last year's versions of Saberson, actually. So I'm actually very happy about that. I used to have to force in these types of stacks, but I think they redid the models a little bit to, uh, to get more of this stuff. Anyway, um, so I would just go ahead and, well, maybe change min uniques to min uniques two instead of min uniques one. See how that dramatically impacts it. Not really, it gives me a little bit more diversification, which is always, not always, but it's usually good. We're going to upload the dummy entry files. Whoops. And then we will save these lineups to puck drop, boom. And then we will resort these by top shelf. And this looks very familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> this looks very close to what we were building by hand before, which is it's good confirmation actually. And I think it is good confirmation of process when the stuff that you recognize or the stuff that you you, you observe and the stuff that your sheets build is similar, especially at the big buy-ins to the, the Sabres and builds. Uh, okay, so there's that. Then we will edit the entries. And voila. Not quite voila. Now voila. Now again, we're going to change all this later, but that's 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 the process. That's how I do it, and hopefully uh, you guys learn something from that. And uh, the other thing is, I love playing it. <laughs> all right, that'll do it. Uh, good luck, everybody.